Uh, point, point of order, the right honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I seek leave to move a motion without notice that this House express its sadness at the passing of His Majesty the King of Thailand, Punapon Adunya Day. Is there any objection to that course of action being followed? There is none. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I move that this House express its sadness at the passing of His Majesty Punapon Adunya Date, the King of Thailand, at the age of 89, who this year celebrated 70 years on the throne. Uh, Mr Speaker, King Punapon was the world's longest serving monarch and he made an extraordinary contribution to Thailand and the region during his reign. He presided over a period of transformative uh, growth uh, and development that saw Thailand emerge as a regional leader and one of uh, Southeast Asia's major economies and he will be remembered for his lifelong devotion to the welfare and well-being of the people of Thailand. Mr Speaker, the visit of His Majesty and uh, Queen Sirikit to New Zealand in 1962 was a cornerstone of the close and friendly ties that have since developed uh, between Thailand and New Zealand. This year, New Zealand and Thailand are celebrating the 60th anniversary of diploma diplomatic relations. His, uh, His Majesty's loss is deeply felt by the Thai people. On behalf of all New Zealanders, I would like to express our sincere condolences uh, to Queen uh, Surikit, Thailand's uh, royal family, and of course the people of Thailand. Mr. Speaker, Andrew Little. Mr. Speaker, I rise to support the government and its motion, and on behalf of the Labour and New Zealand First Parties, uh, note also the loss to the people of Thailand of King Pumipun Adunya Day. Pumipun the Great was widely popular within his home country, and I know Thai people around the world will be mourning his loss and remembering everything he did for their nation. For a nation that has never been colonised, the Chakri dynasty is a living embodiment of the history of Thailand and a history that they are very proud of, and the loss of such a long-serving king is keenly felt. As the world's longest-serving head of state, King Adunya Day took office in 1946 just one year after World War II ended. He rose to the throne at just the age of 18 and spent the rest of his life in the service of his country. That is an impressive record by any measure. His reign oversaw enormous change, not just in Thailand, but around the world, encompassing the beginning and end of the Cold War, man landing on the moon, the fall of the Berlin Wall, the dawn of the war on terror and the Great Recession. I've seen comment from people in Thailand who say they never thought this day would come, that they took for granted that the King would always be around. It's a good reminder, Mr Speaker, that while none of us is immortal, the best way we can spend the brief lives we are given is in service to our people. Uh, Dr Kennedy Graham. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The Green Party associates itself with the sentiments expressed already in the House on the passing of the King of Thailand. Our condolences go out to the people of that land. His Majesty, as noted, was the world's longest serving constitutional monarch. He played a unique role in the national life of Thailand. Mr. Speaker, I, once upon a time, I had occasion to meet the King in the Royal Palace in Krung Tep. It was on the occasion of the presentation of the credentials of our ambassador. I was in humble and obedient attendance. Such as a formality of this occasion in Thailand, there was a dress rehearsal the day before. We were immediately preceded by the North Koreans, and I forget who followed us. What I do not forget is the semi-divine task that was handed to us we were required to walk into the chamber three paces, bow, move to the right, three paces, bow, then move forward to meet His Majesty with a bow and a handshake. The challenge, to put it mildly, was that we were required to walk backwards on withdrawing, since it is not permitted to turn one's back on the king. This included the bowing. And this required mental and physical qualities hitherto 
not demanded of embassy mortals. Success meant a clean exit between the huge and heavy teak doors through which we had come. Failure meant, well, failure. Our New Zealand contingent, a team of two, the ambassador and I, performed well enough in training. On the day, with credentials presented and an appropriately performed greeting with His Majesty, we went to repeat our manoeuvre, match day, as it were. And we so nearly got it right, apart from my right elbow, which sent a crunching sound of bone on wood through the palace room, with the king looking on. I think a B minus performance. I recall this moment with a mixture of respect for the king's dignity and a love of the Thai culture and people where I lived three years. For an appropriate mix of formality and casualness is the hallmark of any people that possess such a deep and rich civilization. Today's Thailand has its political problems and challenges. But the beauty of the land, the culture, and the people are known to us all. May New Zealand remain a close friend. May we assist where we can. May the Thai people receive our respect and condolences on this sad occasion of the passing of His Majesty. Ah, the Honourable T. Urara Flavel. E tu heha te taongi haere ai koutou ki te mate. He tāra tarau tete. He pāte he tehe huru huru whare riha. He papapau namu ki te ringa kia mā fiti te kārue. E te kīngi o Tairan, whakangaro atura. Tāpiri hea te tō haere ki te rā o te wahine toa i kōrero hea i roto i tēnei whare pāre mata ina nahi nei. Ko Helen Kelly tērā, ana, ko riro. No reira haere koutou ki tō te pai o maumahara, ki reira whakangaro atu ai. Te hoki mai, te hoki mai ki tō iwi ki tō kāinga, ki tō papakāinga. Ka tangi ake kia koutou te hunga mate, haere koutou, haere koutou, haere koutou. Tēnei te tuake o te pāti Māori ki te tautuku i ngā kōrero ko kōrero hia. Whakangaro atu rā. A piti honu tātai honu, te hunga mate ki te hunga mate, a nei tātou te hunga ora, e hoama, tēnā kūtou, kia ora tātou katoa keirāra. The Honourable Peter Dunn. Mr Speaker, I want to join with others in expressing condolences to the government and people of Thailand on the passing of His Majesty King Pumi Pol Aduya Day after nearly 70 years as that country's monarch. Uh, many New Zealanders will remember with fondness His Majesty and Queen Surikit's visit to New Zealand all those years ago which probably ignited the modern New Zealand interest in Thailand. Although we've had diplomatic relations for a number of years, that visit and the excitement that surrounded that young couple as they were in those days, I think set off an interest in Thailand and New Zealand that has retained its glory ever since. Mr Speaker, His Majesty uh, wins plaudits for the stability he has presided over during his reign as King of Thailand. But there is another side to him. He was, for instance, an accomplished jazz musician and showed many lighter touches during uh, his long reign. This will be a particularly sad and difficult time for his country, which, as a previous speaker has acknowledged, has been wracked by a degree of political dissension in recent years. And the monarchy has been a very symbolic, stabilising factor. Our thoughts are very much with the people and the government as they go about the task of contemplating a Thailand without King Pimipol and the thought of what might lie ahead. Mr Speaker, New Zealand's relations with Thailand are strong, and this sad event, in many senses, because of the memories that the King evinces with that visit all those years ago, actually helps to cement the relations between our two countries. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it.